Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe, the mob that I play quite a bit of. I'm your host, of course, Hey, I'm Mocha Lover, in which we're playing as Bowman's Germany, as you can tell. I've already set up the armies, I've already set up good, actually relatively okay defensive lines around here. And, of course, Speer and Goring are killing each other while Goring is moving over here. Before we go into any too much of a conflict, let's look at the division. So we have 73, we actually have the most divisions out of anyone here. And I guess we've already killed off a few of them, which is nice. And I expect us actually to do pretty well. So here's the goal. For us to win the Civil War. My goal is to push and take over all of Eastern Germany. Because I only want to focus on one front. I'll be honest, I'm a little lazy. So we're going to focus on this front later on. We're going to push, 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 push. Capture Stetten, Breslau, oh, Königsberg. I love Königsberg. As well as come back over here to the north above uh, Germania and have a good time. So I'm just going to let them go ahead. I think we're going to do okay. Let's see. Do we have any planes? Standing by, standing by. Not for any longer. Um, I think there's no other close air bases, it looks like, so that's okay. Cool. And let's begin with the focus. We did the Burger Krieg, which auto completed anyway, so we're gonna do the faith in our leaders. Full political mobilization. The faith of our people. Well, I want to get as much political power, which we might be able to keep once the Civil War is over. Actually, probably not. But let's do this anyways. With the Civil War starting to gain steam and intensity, a mobilization of the people of the industry and administration is happening. But that is not enough if victory is to be ensured. For Bormann, Bormann or the Eggman, to reclaim his position as Mr. Schmittler's true successor, there has to be a political mobilization as well, from every level of government to celebrities, propaganda departments, associations, and many, 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 many more. A full political mobilization will take place. Everyone shall know that Bormann Bowman, Daddy Bowman, has support far larger and broader than his adversaries, yes. Well, here we go, boys. And I guess girls, if you're watching. I, I don't think that many girls are watching me or us play as Eggman and taking out, well, Eastern Prussia. I'm, I'm glad that Hadrian has a stuff here, which makes it super easy to come over here. And you're just going to hit the Stetten. Now, we're not winning right there. Oh, actually, we have quite a few tanks. Oh, Breslau is a capital, huh? Now, a couple comments. First of all... Bormann is a canonical leader in TNO to win the German Civil War. So that's good to know. Right now we don't have a lot of fuel, but I've already begun trading with the... Let's see. Or I thought I was trading with the Governant... Oh, Saudi Arabia actually exists. Never mind then. Some Italian thing down here. In the meantime, Bulgaria, they are aligned with us, right? So... There we go. Very, very good. Shan Spider assumes control of Germania. Spider, that worthless rat. I don't like rats. Good, good. And do we have upgrades? Krebs. Yes. Oh, we have enough. Not enough command power, though, which sucks. Very good. Himmler is alive and active, so be it. Whatever. Austin is on fire. I, actually, do, do these guys. Oh. Pleskow, huh? The Republic Republic of Ukraine, or at least the Berserkers. I've got to play as Letland someday. The Rifle Air? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, the Last Soldiers. Ooh. Vil oh, Vilna has one. Shining light from heck. United Partisan. Oh. Abba Kovner. He's got a focus tree. Oh. I gotta play as this group sometime. Very cool. Expansion to Africa. Das General Government. Government. However you pronounce that. And Bergen has killed off the French. That was. Expectedly very, very fast. Um. Yeah, the Warsaw Uprising. The Nazi Empire continues to crumble. And yes, it is time to go bald with Bowman. All right, everyone, you hear that? We're going to start assuming that we're going to have uh, no hair very soon. Yeah, I don't think we'd be able to win there, so that's fine. Just do whatever you need to do. English Civil War begins. Very good. We have no ships, but whatever. Honestly, this is... Oh, Donuts launches the coup in Crimea. With the Reich tumbling headlong into chaos, the silence from Crimea has grown increasingly deafening. The home of Germany's Black Sea Fleet, and with enough naval infrastructure to construct a small steel island, the bustling port has seen a huge amount of attention with rumors of daily rounds of gifts flooding the governor's stately home on... Greutungstrasse. However, despite the constant flow of gifts unto Theodor Reichshofen, barely any information has come back out. That is until early this morning, as a frenzy of communiques filled the airways. Famous naval hero Karl Dennis took the radio around 7 a.m. to announce the turncoat to in Germany's darkest hour, dared to strip her of her liberties she had enjoyed since her birth, no doubt a reference to Hans Speil's disregard for the sanctity of the Reichstag as he spoke. Marines in plain clothes took up key positions around the city and dockyards. By noon, the civilian governor had resigned, citing personal disagreements and a brief and likely coerced resignation. Claiming that he wished to stay neutral in the conflict, Dennis lamented that the intrigues in Germania finally pushed him into the only faction he felt to be true, legal government of Germany. Hours. Ah, uh, I love Carl. Carl is such a good guy. Several aides rushed into our command room moments after the conclusion of Durant's broadcast to breathlessly relay this shocking windfall. With Durant rallying the undecided commanders of the navy to our side, 
we could be afforded total control of the seas, not to mention the devastating effect that the denunciations of the hero of the Atlantic will have on what meager forces will remain with the traitors. Send that man the finest bottle we have! I mean, I would say give him a smooch, but maybe maybe, maybe let's not go that far. Carl, well, we like Carl and all, but let's not go smoochy smooch. We'll save that for later. Alright. Even more fuel, because actually, this is not too bad. The South African War, dominoes shall stop. Uh, we're building more factories, which is good with us. We can convert legitimacy to influence, which I don't want to do, because legitimacy actually hurts us right now. Not very good, but it's not that punishing. I've also increased civilian spending, as well as military spending. And I love this. No annual debt interest. Now, we don't get any GDP growth, but no debt. We really are fascists here, aren't we? All right, anyways, let's see. Carrier fighters, this is fine. Carrier cast. We are out of motorized support equipment. We've got plenty of guns, of course. Until it's okay. Anti tank sucks. Tanks suck. That's all right. Um, is there anywhere else we can throw you guys up yet? Not yet. Eastern Germany? That's good. We'll take over all this area. So, other couple, couple comments. Hidden heroes. Uh, play as Dangus Speer. Now, I do want to play Speer someday. I'm not sure when. I'm not sure when that's going to happen. It's going to be actually be probably quite a while after this campaign because I don't want to touch Germany and TNO for quite a while since I've played Hadrus twice at the time of this recording as well as now Borman once. So it's going to be a while before we actually get down there. That being said, when I do play as Spe, I hope if I have enough mental capacity and attention and time to do a split Speer campaign. One with a gang of four and one with, I think, a normal Speer route. I'm not exactly sure how that works, because I, since I, I'll be honest, I almost never play TNO unless it's on the channel. I don't even play that much Way 4 anymore, because I play so much on the channel, but regardless. Um, so, actually, let's, let's go grab Hamburg. That'd be actually really good cut off Kiel from everyone else. But, oh, Russia captured. Cool. The Kriegsmarine is defects, or defected. So, yeah, when I play Speer, hopefully I will do a double campaign, where one side goes Dengist, other one goes somewhere else, if that is what it is. But the Reichsides are once again casting east of Crimea as yet more stunning news emerges from the port. Taking to the radio once again in a fiery diktat on the importance of respect for Germany's institutions, Karl Dönitz shocked observers across the world when, midway through the broadcast, began to read names. Admirals from across the Reich from every conceivable fleet and theater have apparently sent communiques to Theo de Reichenshafen, commending yeah, commending Donitz's actions, his denunciations have evidently hit a chord with much of the German Navy, particularly those who have been feeling uneasy about publicly choosing a side in the civil war, offering an apparent neutral, face-saving alternative. A fanciful stories even begin to circulate by the four sailors from Wilhelmshaven, who jumped overboard and swam over a mile to land where the captain announced his support for Albert Speer instead of Donitz. With ships from across the Reich rallying to Donitz's banner, and therefore to ours, prospects are looking increasingly dim for the other contenders. Loyal sons of Germany, everyone, and Rostock has been captured. Once, once... Once one of the busiest harbors of the Baltic Sea, Rostock has been left thoroughly ravaged as the civil war makes its way to northern Germany. The citizens of Rostock walked with dread as the fighting kept closer and closer to the city. Hopeful citizens rejoiced when the enemy's advance stopped just short of the city. The celebrations were cut short as a shocking artillery and air bombardment rocked the entirety of the city. It's surprising that the uh, would-be conquerors were simply tired of the protracted resistance and such a brazen show of strength would break the city's spirits. The bombardment had the opposite intended effect. The civilians who had up to this point been indifferent supporters of Goring rose up in anger in defense of their homeland, saying the lines between civilian and soldiers was blurred as a vast understatement. After sustaining a heavy small arms fire from plainclothes civilians all across the ruins, many people were wearing planes clothes or simply shot on sight in the streets, with few exceptions. In response, the fighting took to the underground. The city's vast drainage and sewer systems were extensively used by Goring and his newfound allies to great effect, so great, in fact, that the underground systems were allegedly gassed more than once, and combat engineers were deployed to collapse the tunnels, increasing the damage to the already destroyed city. Rostock University, one of the oldest centers of higher education in the world, and the headquarters for the defenders was hit multiple times by ballistic missiles, completely leveling it. It wasn't until after the fighting concluded that the attackers learned that it was actually being used as a hospital and refuge, refuge for suffering citizens, not a single soldier was killed in the strikes, and there were well over a thousand dead buried in the rubble. Goring's men, bloodied and battered, had retreated from the broken bones of the city, covered by his air force. For the time being, it looks like Goring is being put on the defensive in northern Germany. This scene is becoming shockingly repetitive. We mean, becoming common? Uh, it is common. Like, we're doing extremely well. Like, Borman, of course, is cannon, and I got a, what we would, what I would call normally a buttload of soldiers for our army, which is overran like three divisions. Durant seizes Crimea. Oh, we have some dockyards. Build some convoys. So, I mean... Oh, God. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. Infinite fuel. Loads and loads of fuel. Nothing but fuel. More and more fuel. The bug is shot. This war is not going to last that long, as you can tell. Other comments. There will be eventually a potential student uprising in Stuttgart. So we have to be ready for that, apparently, according to some of the comments when, by the time I'm recording this, so... Red Star United Army. What the bad word is that? Myth. Oh, I don't. 
M A, huh? He's a despot, but he's red star. Ah, uh, very, very good. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure how, if anyone can also can really compete against us at this point. And the likes come start in the vegan. Well, we'll see about that, my friends. Help him out. Help him out. Kiel captured. Kiel, one of Germany's greatest ports and the metaphor metaphorical gatekeeper of the Kiel Canal, has fallen. Fighting in Jutland has already steadily crept northwards, and the city was not spared the horrors of war. The canal lays mostly on use. Only the husks of ships line the embankments now, with occasional pontoon bridge dotting the landscape. The fighting in the city itself was brief but fierce. Perhaps as many as 3,000 civilians tried to escape the war zone by boat, but the harbor had been mined. Most of the shipping was sunk as a result, along with the human cargo. But Goring's men, meanwhile, laced most of the major parts of Kiel with explosives and used the resulting destruction and chaos to withdraw from the city and its expense of the civilians. Goring has been driven out of the strategically important city, and the rest of the Jutland lies open, but the human cost has once again been great. The war continues, and we get more legitimacy. The most important thing here. Legitimacy. For some reason, I wanted to say love, but no. Love is not is not going to save <laughs> Goring. Huh. <laughs> And we're, oh, Jesus Christ, we are just going zoom, 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 zoom. If that's the case, I mean, we might be able to just start attacking here too, maybe? I mean, spare. Opposing oh, captured. All, all too familiar sounds of heavy machine guns and artillery strikes have finally reached Pose, and the fighting has reached new lows. Men have resorted to clubs and torches in this fighting as supplies have become more and more spent while the killings continue unabated. The defenders were well prepared. Civilians and slave laborers were directed to dig and construct an impressive ring of forts around and throughout the city. Strong points were meticulously chosen throughout the city, and many first-generation settlers volunteered to take up arms against the approaching enemy army, refusing to see their homes fall without a fight. Both sides got their fight, though. The attackers' dreams of a quick victory was dashed as they ran headfirst into the outer fortresses, even after sustained heavy artillery fire. Missile strikes, armored assaults, and then mass infantry attacks were only some of the fortresses comprised. Or compromised. Trying to assault the city with nearly half of the outer fortresses still operational proved to be disastrous and a constant thorn in the side as the defenders stubbornly fought on inside the city itself. A daring assault by professional army soldiers finally split the defenders in half, ending organized resistance and pose them. Although the city is still a war zone, enough control has been established for the attackers to claim victory. A couple forts still stand to find, lobbing heavy ordnance at whoever comes a little too close to the perimeters. And But Goring, Goring's remnants, for all intents and purposes, are trapped and irrelevant. What about those fanatics? Let's, of, of them starve. They aren't going anywhere. And I forgot... How did I forget? How did I forget this? I got a cup of coffee here. Ah, oh, delightful. You, me, and... Well, getting Germany back. Hey, okay! By November 28th, we already have Goring dead. Very good. I'm gonna go ahead and have, uh, let's see, you guys. I'll have you guys actually come over here. Yeah, you know what? We could probably do that pretty well. And you guys, I'm actually going to send you guys over here just to deal with Hadrish. It won't really matter too much for this, but I want I, I want that. Go ahead. Let these guys come in a little bit. I don't really care, to be honest. Katowice captured. The first shots fired in the Battle of Katowice were not heavy rattling of machine guns, but the, the quick snaps of assault rifles, nor the booming of artillery fire, not even shot in Katowice itself. They were a precision shot from what ought to be, the, thought to be, the elite snipers on the outskirts of the city. After hours of constant harassment, one of the culprits was finally shot as he shifted positions after his latest kill. It was no elite hail to snipe or even a veteran of the Great War. It was a boy no older than 15 wearing a Hitler Jung uniform. Heavy fighting. Started up after the attackers finally entered the city. Artillery crews drank heavily as they launched their ordnance. Most of the snipers had turned out to be Boy Scouts ranging in age as old as 17 to 11. And every call for the sniper suppression was more often than not a death sentence handed out to German children. It would later be discovered that the local youth leaders were mostly hardcore supporters of Goring who had called upon their members to fight for the true fear of Germany and save our homes from rapists and looters. Currently, the new owners of Katowice are too busy to keeping their heads down and method method methodically. I can't speak. My apologies. Uh, combing the ruins for snipers to do much of either. Morale plummets lower and lower as the body count continues to climb. What about those fanatics? Let them starve. They aren't going anywhere. Ah, look! State of legitimacy is getting better and better. More planning speed and more political power gain. Don't mind if we do. Can we do anything with this? Well, we can do that one get more command power, but I'm not too concerned about that. I'm more concerned about fuel. But then again, oh well. Koenigsberg will be ours. Yeah, we can populate these guys extremely fast. At this point, I will have just one man with attack. So, let's take a look. I should just look at the casualties we've inflicted. That's that's my fault completely. I should have looked at that, but we got through one focus so far. And we've already capitulated Goring. Borman is too easy. He's really too easy right now. Oh my goodness! But don't change it. If the devs are watching, please don't change it. I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Keep your friends close. Uh, the faith of the people. Why not? Despite the propaganda of our enemies, Bowman's support is genuine and wide. For example, this letter from Munich housewife here, or this one from a farmer near Vienna, or Wien, Vienna. 
Why are we using English for these cities? What? Letters, gifts, and other signs of support arrive daily at the HQ. Let's cite them in every speech, in every newspaper, in every TV spot that people have faith in us. And us only. Uh, rally the in industry managers. Ooh, I like that. I want some more civilian factories. Stru Stuttgart has been captured. Oh, no. Bowman Citadel on the Rhine. The Stuttgart has been overrun. This fighting that had lasted these few days has suddenly come to an end, and a dreary silence has fallen over the once prosperous city. Many civilians try to hold up in their houses or flee as German fought German across vast automotive complexes and corporate skyscrapers. Some early reports estimate that over 60% of the city has been destroyed, and little housing that remains have quickly become quarters for newly arrived conquerors. As most of the civilian population remains scrounges for the few resources that lay unclaimed, only one question remains unanswered. Will Borman return? Their sacrifice will not be forgotten. Of course, Bo Borman's going in right now. Borman is like, no, 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 no. You're going to die. And then I'm going to launch a massive assault against these guys pretty much as soon as this is over. And once these guys get up there, so. Oh, they actually have someone up there. Wow. Ah, they must have soldiers behind enemy lines. That makes sense. Oh, no. Not the Jewish movement. No. Ah, uh, Stuttgart. Stuttgart, Stuttgart, Stuttgart. If you'd like to read about this, uh, well, no, no, we just reclaimed it. Let's read it. It's Stuttgart's turn yet again to feel the fires of war for Martin Borman's battered armies return with a vengeance. The city's once more again secure, but at a great cost. Well, I wouldn't say it's too great. While military losses are unknown, the civilian population and infrastructure has been decimated. The great automotive plants of the city's Porsche, Mercedes Benz, Volkswagen, Bosch, and a few others have been completely reduced to rubble. No one will be making any breakthroughs here in electronics, and it seems that not many guns will be coming out of the city in the near future. So, the city is strategically important, and Borman once again controls this important junction. No one quite knows where he'll strike next, but with Stuttgart in his hands, that list is long indeed. The Citadel on the Rhine is always a gun. Oh, we were defeated. That sucks. Just go and take out the rest of these places, guys. I mean... Uh, you know what? It's my fault for this. But I don't know. Go. No. There we go. Alright. Have our soldiers made it? For the most part, yes. And I don't want to forget about the planes, either. In the meantime, I guess we can come up here and help them out first. Over here, Speer. On Hedrisch. Hmm, actually. There you go, we can link up. I have one front. That would be quite nice, I would say. This is all the distraction to come over here to. Good. Oh, you defeat us, you attack us in return? Oh, poor, poor thing. You thought we didn't know what was going on, you pieces of garbage. And we'll get in there, and we will kill them off. Transport helicopters. Hey, research. Love it. So it is 63. Hope you guys are having a great year. It's going okay for us. Not too bad. No. I mean, I probably wouldn't want this for anyone else, you know. You know, a complete collapse of our entire civilization. Well, not civilization, but our country. But maybe our civilization. That's not always fun. Uh, rally the beam tem Hmm. All right. Well, whatever. Oh, what do we have here? Outdated equipment and production. That's not good. Motorize. Oh, good. Better motorize. I love it. Hanover captured. The battle for Hanover is finally over. A deathly silence has fallen over the cities while civilians pick up the bones over their prior lives looking for scraps and loved ones. How, how sad. Once again, Speer's men fought with valor and courage, but once again they were thrown back and routed from the battlefield in the face of overwhelming firepower. Hanover's now ruined industry and strategic location was vital to Speer's war effort and without this important strategic center. Speer's position in the northwest is precarious indeed. Rumors fly about that Speer and his loyalists are on the back foot and that another major defeat like this could be very well knock him out of the war. The fate of Speer hangs in the balance. And yes, it will. Ah, we're all positive. Lice. Lice? Nice. And I remember one of the comments from yesterday saying that someone's heard, thought I like, hit my desk um, when I was recording. You were completely right. I did hit my desk by accident. Now, are we done over here yet? Come on. I even gave you the planes. Uh, I would recommend you guys actually keep moving in and kill them off. Come on, there's just a small little contingent here. Help them out, help them out. There you go. Beautiful, my friends. I'll throw you over there, because now, you're coming over here. If they want to come in a little bit, that's fine. I don't really care. Good, good, good. How many minutes have we lost? That's not, that's not bad, really, for... Which some of these guys already? You guys, honestly, these guys should be out completely out of supply. Hadra should not have any supply here, but he still does somehow. I don't know. I don't understand that. I really do not. 
And how do we not have enough fuel? Did, like, did they stop trading with us or something? Cuba? What the heck? Game? No, 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 no. Come on. It's okay to buy from them. They're not bad people. That's fine. I don't care about constructing buildings. I want to win the goddamn war. Hmm. From refinery, sort of requirement. Well, I should help the war effort at least a little bit more. If you can just cut them off, that'd be great. And then go up there so you don't get encircled yourselves, maybe. Faith of the people. Promise of calm. People's champion. Mm, faith of our leaders. From the old aristocrats and Junkers with the grand oldest. See, so the generals and officers of the Second Bell Creek, as well as the old fighters from before our rise to power, they've all have one thing in common. Their faith in Borman is strong, and the faith will be the foundation upon which Germany will, will be made great again. By mobilizing their support, whenever necessary, we can get the edge in the civil war we need. We will reward their faith once the situation is all won and done. Now we can do some stuff over here. More manpower is nice, but we already have over 300,000. I'm not too concerned. I'd rather... This is not bad either, but we have a lot of wars. I'd rather get civilian factories, because I'm thinking about, <clears throat> of course, the economy. What else would I be thinking about? The war? No, the economy, my friend. The economy. Without the economy, what are we? These guys are... These few tank divisions are kind of sad, I'll be honest. It's a little sad. Well, we're doing a good amount of damage, but we just can't win any battles, apparently, over here with just tanks. Then again, it hurts if you don't have any fuel, but, you know, whatever. Push the tanks into the enemies, and maybe you can win the battle. Oh, what's going on here? A little bit of lag. Uh, good. I really don't understand how they're getting supplies, though. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe they have a bonus to out-of-supply stuff, maybe. Maybe that's it. Algerian War. Cool. What if we did a general attack? Can we do that? Well, yeah, we win in some locations. In some locations, not so much. But in some locations, yes, very, very much. Could you guys actually win down there, maybe? Yes. Yes. I don't care about the cost, I'll be honest. As you can tell, I really don't. Help them out here. They're not looking too strong. Head up there, cut off Königsberg. Not bad, yep. Yeah, we are definitely breaching over areas. Hadrish is not doing well. Government prevails in the English Civil War. Goodbye, Himmler. And what do we have here? Uh, command power. That's really not super necessary. I can't imagine. I mean, they have that much. Oh, they actually have do quite a bit of manpower. Hadrish, not so much, but we'll see what happens. They have up to 43 divisions, up to 26. It's all up to us to kill them off. Anyone have upgrades? No. Well, actually, they might, but we just didn't have enough earlier. Yeah, but maybe, maybe they're okay, though. Uh, you guys definitely can do that. I know that for a fact. You can do, you can win right there. We just need more fuel. Uh, I don't want to stop this, but so be it. Why is it lagging so much? Now go and hold. That was not a great attack. We lost eighty thousand so far, but it wasn't too bad. Seriously, like this has got to be glitched or something. It, oh wait, no, it's not. It's spare, not Hadrish. It's spare. So he's getting su supplies through there. <sighs> Quite annoying, I'd say. Quite annoying. Like, how do we not have enough fuel? Like, what is going on? Total required current consumption every day. Not that much. I mean, honestly, we should be getting more fuel than this. We're trading literally everything away from... Get rid of that. Why would... Wait, hold on. Why are we trading that much away? What? Uh, what? Uh... No, wait. No, I don't want to do that one. Do this one. Fuel, right? Ah, see, this is what I was doing. I was trading all of it away for that. Oh, that's my fault completely. I thought I was getting fuel, but I'm getting chromium. Oh my goodness, you guys are like, you, in the comments you must be like, wow, Mr. Mocha Lover, Herr Mocha Lover is getting kind of stupid. I'm mentally slipping, apparently. Well, some may say the deputies of the Reichstag have scattered all over the various factions of the Civil War. The largest plurality supports Bormann. A declaration by these men in favor of the legitimate successor will undoubtedly cement Bormann's reputation as the Reichstag's champion. Who, who knows? We might even be able to convince a few wavering or undecided deputies from all over the right to join us for our cause. That'd be not too bad, I'd say. National daddyism? Maybe. Uh, hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Now we should get a buttload more fuel, right? We're not trading for chromium. Why was I trading for away from chromium? What the heck is wrong with me? I don't want to do that one. Saudi Arabia? We love Saudi Arabia. You should easily be able to, be able to crush them now. No wonder. Why would we want chromium? There you go. Beat him up. We lost 86,000. Four 
Forces around Königsberg. We gotta break into them. All right, so you're gonna go up there, but you're actually just gonna go up to there. So you're gonna help out take out Königsberg. Finish, finish military government steps down. Now it's time for a true republic. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's go come into here. There we go. Now this is better. Let's go. That's completely my fault. Absolutely my fault. I made a mistake earlier. Why would I trade away for that much chromium? We don't even need that much chromium. We just need fuel. Oh, good. And these guys are going to die. Completely my fault. We would have had this war done sooner if it wasn't for my misgivings. Uh, Alright, we could use a little bit more daddyism, I guess. National daddyism. That's what we call it under Eggman. And this coffee's not too bad. Yeah, if I didn't make a mistake, then we would have been done maybe even with the Civil War. But, you know, mistakes were made. Mistakes happen. Herr Mokulever does have his days. Um. Well, Joachim Saldrozinski, you sound a little un Aryan there, I would say. You sound a little, <clears throat> as I do say, Slavic. Oh, that's more, yeah. Nice. I love this. No debt, no interest on the debt, no growth, but more GDP. The dollar, or the, uh, what was it, uh, the mark, the mark is what is, is uh, fueled by the German worker spirit, right? Whatever Herr da Daddy Hitler said back in the days about expansion of economy and stuff, I don't remember. Something like that. The mark is backed up by the German worker's produce. Something like that. I don't know, Mein Kampf was really weird. Well. You guys head in? Now we should be able to win, especially up here, so. Since we do have planes, so that'll be good. Let the tanks do their job. Let them force the attack. We could rally the aristocrats. Frankfurt captured. Frankfurt won of Albert Schwer's largest center support has fallen after an intense four-day struggle for the city center. Although young students contested nearly every city block, the morale is simply not enough in the face of sustained artillery fire combined with determined infantry assaults. The building-to-building -building fighting has been torn apart the old medieval center of the city. After Speer loyalists turned this section into a virtual fortress, on those on the offensive lost their patience and decided to level most of the culturally rich old quarter. Lingering gunshots ring out as Speer supporters are hunted down to the man. Goethe University, one of the largest schools, once one of the largest schools in the city, is now more than a grave for those who made their last stand there, the only occupants being the corpses of the defenders lying next to a bloodstained ruined wall and everyone is asking themselves the same question. Will Speer recover or is he finished? Speer's fanatics have been put in the ground. In the, the banks, great friends, great friends in high places. Wittelsbach, Hohenzollern, Welfa, and even Habsburg. The old aristocracy's influence may have faded, but it's still there and is still their old money. Their holdings and their titles. Bormann has the means and the influence to draw upon these connections. A few dinners here, some clandestine meetings there, promises, bribes, threats if necessary, and the leaders of old will help ahead the fear of new. The daddy fear. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're not doing great here, but at this point, I don't think these guys can actually stand up. Oh, there goes there go Spear. Yep. And, oh, he's actually got a buttload more manpower now. Very good. And Essen is ours. If we can move down fast enough, that would be great. And let's keep doing that. Put a lot of pressure so they cannot move. Where do we put those planes? Where the heck are the planes? Let's look at this. Oh, there you are. What? I thought I sent you up to here, Hamburg. Eh, whatever. Does not matter. Essen, the capital of the proclaimed reformers of Germany has fallen today, but that hasn't stopped the killings for now. Trapped soldiers who are hiding throughout the city. The battle is cataclysmic. Steadfast and zealous students clash with an equally determined enemy. The bombardment of the entire city did little to dampen the spirits of the defenders. Speer loyalists of all ages took up defenses, and the rebel impatiently awaited the inevitable assault on the city itself. The fight more resembled a death struggle, but reminiscent to the great battle of the East than a simple clash of split country as waves of young men attempted to storm important locations. Many of them mowed down in the streets. Back and forth, battles raged for important buildings that still overlooked tactically about areas of the now ruined city. Strong points, too stubborn to fall, were repeatedly hit with ballistic and ground based missiles by the attackers. Supported by tanks and APCs, one by one, the city blocks began to fall. All cars loaded with bombs and artillery shells were the response, and more than a few of the surprise attackers met a grisly fate as these makeshift bombs started to hit convoys. Uh, troop formations, armor, and, of course, strong points, refusing to surrender after the fall of the city. Speer's forces abandoned their military wear and blend it into what remains the civilian population, which is currently being brutalized as the conquerors, conquerors exact revenge and try to root out the remains of the performers. While his bloodbath raged on, Speer and his most important advisors quietly left the city, the current location unknown. As the observers watch these events unfold, one, incurring, one recurring question keeps being asked. 
Is this a fate that awaits the rest of Germany? Germany's latest bloodbath does not look over. No, but it's going to be a bloodbath nonetheless. With uh, these uh, SS dudes going to be a big old pain in the tukish, but that's okay, especially with more ground crews for planes and such. Oh yes. Oh, hey, just we broke we broke over the river. Nice. Now they level ten forts here. Is this, the imaginal fort, uh, imaginal lines don't no longer here. So we've lost thirty six thousand to them. We've lost quite a few more than he has lost, but in the end, oh, never mind. They've lost more. Burgundy. When are we gonna place Burgundy? I don't know. Uh, you know what? Keep investing. Keep building. I love it. Yeah. So. With Regardless of my minor, I mean, even with my minor mistake, it's not that hard to win the Civil War's performance. I mean, the canonical leader, not too bad. And these guys have been cut off. Oh, yes. Oh, do we win? Is that us? No. That's just Italians. 50,000 versus 100,000. Oh, and they're 150,000? Nice. Oh, I love it. Add on in, everybody. Hadrius is going to fight to the last man until you're all dead. Until they're all dead. Oh, hold on. Wait, we want to make sure. Strasbourg has been captured. Strasbourg, the nervous center of the Reinhardt Hedrich's military operation, has been finally overrun. The resulting battles left the city burnt and ruined. Not much remains of it. The SS have fortified the riverbanks and city heavily. Only after hours of continuous bombardments and armored assaults where the SS finally pushed back and makeshift bridge were able to be set up. The city itself was nearly impossible to crack. The attackers closely hugged the sides of the streets of, as German civilians forced to drive vehicles loaded with bombs speed down the wide avenues towards advancing men. As more of Strasbourg fell, entire blocks would be burst into flames, having been wired to explode. <clears throat> Suicidal SS attacks would almost, almost always hit formations hit by these massive explosions. In either an act of mercy or afraid that straggling citizens may interfere with their plans, most of the city's population was allowed to leave before the fighting. Leniency on those attackers' behalf may have backfired as SS soldiers managed to infiltrate with refugees and attack the enemy's back lines. Worse yet, it looks as if Hadrius has managed to escape with most of his general staff. What was meant to be a quick, decisive victory has turned to be a, out to be a titanic struggle, with sporadic fighting that's still breaking up. It's like those dudes run to their cities like they run their death camps. I'm going to immediately retreat our soldiers. And not retreat, really. Put them around Germania. Spido must die. Spido must die now. We have enough soldiers that we'll be okay. They are, they are fighting to the last dude, hopefully. Oh, elected president of France. Amis, la France nous attend. France is dead. Is that what it means? Wow, you look sad. He looks extremely depressed. Holy cow, I guess you'd be depressed too if you just lost the war against Burgundy. And now you know what's going to happen to all the Parisians. Oh, it's, I guess Hadrius has to literally lose all. So there we go. Okay. We won. But not until we have Germania. Yeah, seriously, like, if I didn't make that mistake earlier, we might have done... Okay. Oh, there we go. Spado of Savannah's Germania. The wounded Germany that we inhibited has been mocked with tension in the past days, while Spado contemplated his response to our request of putting his forces on stand-down orders. However, the entire nation took a sigh of relief and joy when Spado and Rommel announced that their divisions would stand down for the first time since Germany engulfed itself in internal conflict and now allow Bormann's forces to enter Germania peacefully. As church bells rang across Bavaria and beers were passed out to impromptu crowds in Germanian pubs and beer halls. It seems no place in the Reich did not do something to celebrate the end of the harrowing civil war that claimed so much German blood. It only lasted for like five, six months. That was, that's, a, that's not bad. That's, that's sort of a quick civil war. May the Reich prosper for 1,000 years. Developers note, if after this event you are unable to select or assign any units, simply save and reload your game and the issue will be resolved. This is a base game bug sometimes caused by tag switching and we don't can't really do anything about it until Paradox fixes the issue in a future patch. Thanks, devs. Thanks for letting me know because that does happen sometimes. I do know that. So an old fox with no more tricks. Beautiful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I hope you enjoyed that Civil War. The, the, the episode's not over yet. I'll let you know. It's not over yet. We've done very, very well. Oh, there we go. Hmm. So it looks like we might have just tag switched to uh, Spidels. And now we're the Grosser Monsters right. And now everything's probably on fire and dead. You know what? Just put everyone there. That's fine. Put them all under one administration. Uh, free military factories. We could probably use more of that. We definitely need more guns. We definitely need some more anti-tank. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. And then yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. More like no more SS. That was a terrible joke. Are we missing anything? Improved battle tanks, motorized APCs. Scout helicopters. Actually, I think from patch F for the cutting room floor, they made attack helicopter support companies as well, maybe? I can't remember, maybe. Let me double check that. Improved APCs. Improved battle tanks. I, I don't see any APCs here, so we'll do that. There we go. Eh, we don't need that many trucks. That's good. And let's go ahead and do 
Oh, look at this. The Reich's down. The Reich's war down in Africa. The Krieg im Sudan. All right, well, let's do this. The Waldritt. The Burger Krieg had been won, and Fuhrer Baumann has come out victorious. For the moment, our enemies have been crushed. However, Bormann struggled to continue to control. Gulf's Germanisch's Reich is far from over. For the fatherland lies in ruin. If we do not act fast to rectify our poor situation, it may embolden our enemies. To prevent any challenge to our rule, we must begin to mold Germany to Bormann's desires. Well, Bormann, of course, has been victorious. Bormann rode in triumph through the remains of Germania today towards the Volkshalle as bands played Das Rheingold and crowds cheered his arrival, waving the Reich's banner on every corner. An honor guard received him there, where the nation's new Führer quickly began announcing his plans to, for his new order. In his speech, Bormann emphasized that his right to rule has been established already not in the flames of the German Civil War, but in the victories and accomplishments of the Reich in World War II. As a rightful country continuation of the German government, he now rules an order built up by the sweat and toil of Germans decades before and saved and brought into the next decade by the sweat and toil of Germans now. Internationally, and the response is mute as the United States and Japan both dig their feet and, and prepare for more of the same from Germany. At last, the Reich is ours, and... Oh, that hurts me. Oh, that growth. I mean, I don't mind 0% growth, but 3% debt interest versus 0.1%. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts us. That's okay. First first things first. That being said, before we restore our glory, the gross Germanic the Reich must first reclaim the basics of living from the fires and horrors of the Burger Krieg. Now, what are these basics we must reclaim? Well, Fear Borman supposes that rather evidently. Food for the citizenry and the reconstruction of our once glorious infrastructure are precisely those basics. Therefore, we will ensure that the people are fed and the roads will hopefully will be paid. The political rodeo. For the horrors of the Bugger Creek behind us now. The fear is dared to hope for some semblance of order and stability to return to the Reich. Unfortunately, though, it seems that this is barely the case. Through the remnants of the traitor, Goring's forces were reintegrated to, to the Reich. Thanks to the mercy of the Führer, some, shown a chief among them, still push their agendas and they are not alone. The rem remnants of the traitor Spies clique still agitate the youth, ranting and raving about reforms and liberalization. Reforms will happen, but not as Speer envisioned them. The Reich will not sink into the depravity it had fought so hard against, but instead will rise from the ashes of recent memory like a phoenix. Efforts to re-educate dissidents have already begun, and reintegration efforts personally ordered by the Führer make rapid progress, ensuring that the legacy of Herr Hitler, forgotten by the rebels, is the Reich's only philosophy. Wow, Schoshock Wehrmacht does not look good. The hail has already been deployed to key areas to ensure further stability, and the Führer works around the clock to reform the slave system to something more economically sound. Our Reich's commissariats will be brought back into the fold, as the Führer has promised time and time again that the native and the native revolts will be swiftly put down. As for those who doubt the Führer, who wonder how things would be if another sat in the Reich's stag, they will be dealt with swiftly. The Führer, with his characteristic political savvy, has already begun to working at chipping away the foundations of treasonous treasonous institutions and replacing them with no loyal, very, very loyal, incredibly loyal National Socialists. The Heer will be brought in line and the students will learn to see reason and when the work is done, the Reich will stand above all enemies and the Führer will deliver unto the world the glory of true National Socialism or true National Daddyism as I've been calling it recently. In the last generation, oh, how sad. Heil Bowman, oops, I should have looked at what we got from that. Oh, look at this. Das Kottenhaus. Oh, crap, what is this? Control and faction? Oh, my goodness. Oh, to secure a future for national daddyism, we must act to ensure our allies are strong and loyal, that our opposition is well on its way to dismantlement. Um, party bureaucracy, loyalty, 47% from the conservatives. Loyalty must have selected a target first. Oh, good lord. Minus power, subtract 5 power from the intelligentsia, interactions count, opposition, slave plantations, Aji Fabin. Well, let's see. Conservative support is pretty high here. Well, it's that's not that much. Opposition, immutable. Well, let's go ahead and increase the power to party bureaucracy. Target the reformists, target the conservatives. More loyalty? Well, they're already pretty darn loyal. Let's see. Who's close? Reforms, 29, 30. Eh, the people might like us. Conservatives is pretty good right here. 34%, 45 is pretty good. 43%, that is not terrible. This is not bad either. Not great for slaves. Not too bad, and that's not too bad either. So, let's go ahead and maybe we'll do the hail. So the hail, and militarists, subtract two militarist loyalty from the hail, increase loyalty. Add two militarist loyalty to the hail. Ooh, conservatives, strike at the conservatives within the hail. It's looking a little better. How long can we do? How much can we do this? Faction loyalty. I want. Oh, that's good. That's looking a little better. And the militarists. 
There we go. Not bad. That's looking a little, a little better already. Cool. Awesome. Can we do that constantly? Interactions count. How, how long can we do this? Because that's good, having us... Having the hair. Uh, actually, as someone did say... Oh, God. Reclaim the pact with the Book of Creek finally fading away. Bowman's view is returning to the Ein Heights pact and the Rox Commissariats. Oh, what's left of them? Either way, once the world be is were to begin... Is that I am? Once the word to begin is given, we will be able to assess and plan a response to what has been going on around us. So, with this campaign... He's a conservative, and I want to be pretty orthodox about what he does, so I'll play probably Borman again someday, maybe, and we'll probably go down maybe the more of a reformist path for him someday. So, I mean, militarist is not bad, but I think we'll just stick with conservatives for now. Info section. Overviews. This is disabled in this release. Oh, sorry. 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 So we'll just keep going with conservative stuff for now. But if you say we can go to war with other people... And actually, I, I made sure that off-screen we had our uh, guys kind of set up here. We have a lot of debt now. I have a couple, you know, mountain divisions. They're all six, 12 combat width, which is not great. We have a lot of infantry, which are actually 18 combat width, which is not bad. It's not great. And we ha do have a few marines as well, just in case. Just for funsies. They're actually 12 combat width. Usually the AI likes to have six combat width sometimes. At least when they start out. And we have some tanks. 18 combat width, which is not bad. Some motorized. We've got some motorized 18 combat width, as well as some other tanks, which are, well, 18 combat width as well. So that's actually not too bad. Ah, uh, that uh, could be worse. So who do we want to go to war with first? Pass to Sudenton? Historically, the first major foreign conquest of the Joseph Germanic Reich, the region passed to Sudenton, was reformed in the protectorate of Blumen and Mauren. Given the region's status is primarily Germanized, at least according to the pre Bilga Creek documents, its final integration into the Reich will surely be a quick and simple affair. Well, let's see what happens. Can we do that with just tanks? We should be able to, right? Right? Are we importing anything? Why are we importing that? Holy crap. Uh, one thing It's one thing for oil, but this? I don't know. Ceylon? Sure, why not? Thank you. Let's grab some of this. Uh, let's go to 24, and this one will go to 24 as well. I really don't want to hurt a construction, but we're doing pretty darn well in construction anyways. That'll be fine. And planes. Oh, I should have looked at planes but off screen. Oh, I'm just. There you go. I don't want to deal with that. Oh, missiles. I never use missiles. Attack helis. Why not? Ooh, jet cast. I like jet cast. The monsters pod in Abbasspeer. And his gang of Bolsheviks are still missing. Wilhelm Bergdorf's side. As Bowman read the reports with a scowl, the officer was grizzled, jowly, and never looked so tired. Goring is also vanished. We have entered. Interrogated Ferdinand Shona and his professor's ignorance over the man's current location. We will find them soon enough, Bowman replied, rubbing his eyes. I want them swinging from nooses in the center of Germania. My fear, I hear rumors that you plan to part in the field marshal. Baldo von Schirach placed the wooden pipe into his mouth and began to pop, eyes on blinking. Not many people dared to stare at Bowman in such a provocative manner. The aristocrat's newfound power clearly gone to his head. Bowman glared back in silence. We have pardoned many talented military officers and soldiers, Bergdorf replied quickly, slicing through the sudden tension. The Wehrmacht will be severely weakened without them, especially following such a catastrophic civil war. More importantly, pardoning Shona would control and Bowman explained, if Shona feels like he and his movement have a modicum of influence, he will be little more than a thorn in our side if we execute him. We will create a martyr for the militarists to rally behind. He deserves death, but requires forgiveness. Shona will be available to field marshal. So be it. So be it. Actually, we should have plenty of these. I guess we'll use them as well as some casts. Oh, wait, let's see. Attack helicopters. Casts. Oh, we don't have any more casts. There you go. Bowman and Marvin. Very good. Just do, go and do that. Three, two, one. Pass, pass the Sutenten. Erre van Erre Gebert. The Bohemian garrison was, had an unenviable, an, uh, unenviable position even before the Civil War. Despite lying at the heart of the Reich, they were plagued by partisans and Czechs simply refusing to give up in the face of destruction. Ironically, this turmoil spared them from involvement in the bitter power struggle of, of the rest of Germany and the chaos that overtook the Reich evidently did more harm to the partisans than it did to the garrison. Holding on by tooth and claw, the beleaguered garrison took back the countryside and hunted them down one by one. Now Bohemia is ready to return the fold. To the fold, at least. Fear Berman and his brazy actions to the loyal soldiers of the right cut off from the fatherland and to the governor whose leadership kept them from straying with a new set of medals commissioned for the defense of Bohemia. Or the defenders of Bohemia. Finally, the Reich's first conquest will be completed. Honor to whom honor is due. The new order, huh? 
Her eyes in the northwest. Rex Commissar Niederlander has been under a state of Germanization under Otto Seyss Inquart for the last two decades. With the Rex Commissar's passing, the political situation has changed drastically. We must decide how to deal with our Dutch brethren. Well, okay, they're a puppet. That's fine with me. If you just, you know, park a lot of tanks right next to the country, they tend to agree with you. Von Krosik. If you'd like to read about him, go right ahead. Interesting. Hail Lutz. Hail Lutz salutes. New orders. The garrison in our protectorate of Bowman Mountain has triumphed over these pesky partisans that assaulted them during the German Civil War. While this saves us from another expensive police action, it also presents a potentially dangerous political president. The garrison has reformist tendencies, and Prague isn't that far from Germania. We could just re redeploy them to some far off corner of the Reich to limit their impact, of course, but then the reformists and the overall hail will be denied a triumph they achieve. Or we could grant them their propaganda victory. Of course, this would further. The impression that it is the Wehrmacht, not Fjell Bollmann, who was the one in the driver's seat. These soldiers must be stationed far away from Germany to contain their influence. More military loyalty, less conservative loyalty. These Czechs have proven their Germanization, defeating the SS, they can stay. Reformers loyalty, less military loyalty. Well, let's take a look at this. Truth about Bohemian partisans. Oh boy. Well, let's take a look. I kind of wish this would appear. When can we do this again? Interactions kind of like every month. So the hair. Right, so if you do the top one, militaries get 4% more and conservatives goes down by 2. Ooh. They can stay. More reformists goes up by 3% and lo militaries loyalty goes down. I think that's probably for the best just because we want to make sure conserve support is king. The lines of Crimea. Mm. Our eyes to the northwest, my friends. It is time. The fascist state. In the northwest of our European empire, Dietzland has been born. The Dutch fascist Cornelius van Gielkerken has declared himself a leader, promising to bring Dutch national daddyism or socialism to his rebellious people by declaring total independence from the Einheits Pact. The Netherlands, a German Rux commissariat since their invasion in 1940, has betrayed our ideals and embraced the lunacy of this man who seized power during the chaos of the Bürgerkrieg. Uh, I guess Burger Krieg. The Reich losing the loyalty of their Germanic brethren is like a man losing his finger. The man grits his teeth in pain but marches on nonetheless while the finger lies motionless and pale in the mud. To save the Netherlands from itself, we must deliver an ultimatum to Van Gielkerken. He must surrender to our demands and bring his country back into the security of the Einheits Pact or else we'll, we will crush them. If the Dutch value peace, then they will make the right decision. Just how proud are these national socialists? And the tip of the northern tip of the Jutland. To the north of Germany rests the protectorate of Denmark, sleepy and content. With its generously bestowed and albeit limited political autonomy, the nation has remained sensible and stable even in times of crisis, never straying away from its obligation of loyalty to the Reich. The Danish are Germanic people, a fact evident if one were to visit its snowy lands and survey the men and women with their golden hair and azure eyes. The full integration of Denmark into the Reich, though inevitable, is likely years away, but when these efforts are fulfilled, it shall be a joyful day for all Aryan kind. Can't wait. Keep building, my friends, and we await. They reply. First things first. Slaves to the farmers. Ooh, agricultural stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go get some more agricultural stuff. Regrettably, the Fuhrer cannot snap his fingers and cause a nationwide banquet to materialize. While the Fuhrer wields absolute power over our state, he is no god. There's a serious shortage of food that he could result in the commencement of a famine and cause the deaths of hundreds of thousands if we do not act. However, we need not worry, as Fuhrer Bormann has an ingenious plan to solve the impending crisis. We will simply put the slaves to the work in Germany's agricultural industry en masse, and so that we may produce the food required to feed the nation. There's a little bit of stability, but so be it. Actually, I want to see this. A Christmas Germania. Before we talk about that, I want to see this. The Reich's war down in Africa, I kind of want to help out, maybe, if we can. Honorary Boers, Honorary Aryans. Who take has to suffice? Schwarze Adler. And help the hunter. Alle Waffen gegen Südafrika. Seeing the war of victory? The Descent's War. Okay, cool. Test new weaponry. Ooh. No end in sight. End on Sieg. End without victory. That does not sound good. Extermination through attrition. Ooh. The best gear. Hmm. How's the war going down in Africa? Anyways, but uh, a request from Germania. It's actually not going too bad. Uh, von Gilkerken and his Dutch fascists may be threats to the reputation of the Reich, but doubtless they are power-hungry threats. Whether the self-proclaimed leader does, desires it or not, we will force the title of Reich's Commissar on him and demand that he bring his nation back into the fold of the Einheit's back. As a man who has spent time in the upper echelons of the party, Bowman knows that the egotists such as Goring and Speer make the least predictable of politicians. If we have underestimated this Dutch man's intelligence and he denies their generosity, his citizens will face the brutal con consequences of their betrayal. The fear has informed von Gilkerken that he is prepared to negotiate the future of Dutch policy, but this is 
is petty dictator, but this petty dictator must be forced to understand one simple thing. By words or by blood, the Netherlands will be will return to the Reich. What shall they choose? We shall see. And there was another comment from the other day that uh, from the last video says we should play as LBJ and Bennett soon because in the cutting room floor patch F, there was a patch the, the patch helped uh, smooth out some of the bugs in uh, LBJ's path. But he refuses to submit. The Führer's assumption that Cornelius van Gielkirchen was power-hungry enough to accept the title of Reichskommissar has proven to be unfounded. The petty dictators arrogantly rejected our offer, claiming that the Dutch National Socialism cannot thrive under the shadow of the Reich. In his hubris, van Gielkirchen has signed his death warrant of countless signed the death warrant of countless native Dutch men doomed to fall against the unstoppable might of all Wehrmacht. No matter, through negotiation or blood, the Netherlands will return to us. The Leider Dietzen will be hanging from the piano wire before he can blink. Prepare the Heerhoff invasion. Crush the Dutch traitors. War will be declared in the Netherlands in a few days. C'est la vie. Hope they like armor. Chief of the party chancellor, the silver-haired man sitting opposite Bormann delicately cut into his poached eggs and salmon. Balda von Schirach had forged the Hitler Junge into a force of fine young airy men during the thirties and served dutifully in the Reichstag, opposing the chaotic ideals of the reformists and militarists alike. He was a pretentious intellectual and a career politician, yes, but nonetheless a dedicated national socialist and a competent administrator. Bormann had been swift in naming him the new party chancellor. The party chancellor is a beast that needs wrangling in times of peace and stability, Bormann chuckled, tearing at a stake with a long, sharp knife. Let us alone, let alone following a civil war. As we rebuild our nation, so must we rebuild the party and the state. The Bürgerkrieg will not soon leave our national consciousness, von Schirach sighed sadly, to quote Lewis Carroll. If seven maids with seven mops swept it for half a year, do you suppose that Walver said that they would sweep it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a better tear. It will not be easy, Bowman continued, ignoring the effeminate aristocratic's aristocrats tangent. You will have to manage all party affairs. I trust you with this task. Thank you, my fear. A bureaucratic labyrinth is one worth conquering. And what can we do? Oh, we can do it again. Good. So, this is not bad. We want everyone allied to us as conservatives. Reformist intelligentsia is not good. This is good. This is not bueno, but I... This is, this is pretty good. The people. The people. So, let's lower reformist support. Twice. And conservatives... we give them more power. Oh, oh, does power do something here? Because I'd just rather have more loyalty. Not bad. So, power is 358 for the reformers. Conservatives have over 900. And militaries have 568. Not bad. So, I, I assume it's like every few weeks. You know, maybe it's every once in a month that you can interact with those people. So. Yeah, with our planes here, they should do relatively okay. Oh, we do have some ships here too. But I'll deal with the ships off. Well, actually, maybe not. We have not very much, do we? Well, let's see. Who's going to lead this stuff? Donuts? Does do Donuts didn't come back to us, huh? Alright, well, whatever. Sea Wolf, Superior Tactician. Another Sea Wolf. We got a lot of Sea Wolves here. Everyone's a Sea Wolf. Alright, everyone's a Sea Wolf. So be it. It's so hard to see. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, what? Um, can I not? Hold on. All subs, right? Why is it so difficult, game, to do that? Wait, what happened to that guy? It's very weird, okay. There we go, that's better. Um, it doesn't really matter. There we go. Chief of the Reich's Chancellor. The three colorless bureaucrats nod eagerly as a fear of praise or tireless loyalty and detail their new governmental positions. Gerhard Klopfer, Albert Hoffmann, and Helmut Friedrich had served as Baumann's deputies for over two decades. A brown servant of the brown eminence, uh, they were mockingly called. All three wore the title as a badge of honor. Hoffmann and Friedrich accepted their new assignment as Balder von Schirach's deputies and left the room with fervent salutes. Gerhard Klopfer stayed behind, politely waiting for Baumann to finish his cigar. He's a slender, somewhat skeletal man with two sunken eyes and a flop of gray hair swept over his bulging forehead. Gerhard Baumann finally spoke up. You have served me well for many years without complaint or restraint. You represented me faithfully during the Endlösung conference and shot down any arguments against the extermination of our enemies. Not once have you faltered. I hereby name you the official deputy of the, the F question mark er, and chief of the Ch Reich's chancellery. We both know the latter is a ceremonial position more than anything but Gerhard Klopfer blinked away his watering eyes and coughed gruffly. Thank you, mein Führer. I will serve you well. The truth about Bohemian partisans, though. With the Bohemian situation finally being sorted out, Bormann has ordered an investigation into the partisans that gave the garrison so much trouble. Those also were unsettling, to say the least. 
It had been widely suspected that the diehard Czech and Polish resistance groups had somehow struck from Sudeten and Carpathian holdouts, but every investigative group showed the same picture. An empty shell, cleanse of the actual Czechs years, maybe even decades ago, what filled them were SS members in disguise. While one or two groups might have been a little surprised considering Himmler's usual machinations, every single group in the entire partisan front was secretly marching under the orders of the Black Sun. Needless to say, this revolution has caused widespread shock, outrage, and alarm among the Reich's society. After all, if the SS can do this, then how many other SS underground organizations are there? How deep does Himmler's network run? Probably quite deep. Operation Blauer Rhine. The rot of the Dutch National Socialism must be burned from the face of Europe once and for all. The hail is ready. The Luftwaffe is prepared. On the order of the fear, we shall launch a rapid invasion of the Netherlands and a display of our total military might and political power. Any man who resists will bleed on the streets. Every supporter of Cornelius or yeah, Cornelius von Gilkirchen who dares defy us will be hanged like dogs. Those who resist will be dragged out of their hiding holes and shot by our article forces in one fell swoop. The hysteria gripping the Dutch will be smashed like a bug under a rock. Let the, let's slip the hounds of war. Cornelius? Cornelius. Cornelius. Uh, maybe it's not Cornelius. My pronunciations are all wacky. You know this. If you follow my channel, you know my... Oh. Hello. Hello. Pronunciations are all bad. Well, we're literally just marching in. We haven't even done our land auction. We've already killed 3,000 enemies. Oh, those poor individual Dutchmen. Led by a... Power hungry madman. It's only 64, too, so. What a shame. What an absolute shame. And they are back under the Reich. Occupational authorities, huh? Slaves to farmers, very good. Let's do this stuff, I don't know. The Reich's war down in Africa. The rifle successors finally tromped and reunited Germany under properly under his rule. But the Reich's wars are far from over in darkest Africa. Our Reich's commissariats fought a brave, fight a brave war in protection of the Boers of the Union of South Africa. The Boers have long pr pr proved a civilizing element to the barbarians of the Dark Continent, and their fight against the American-aligned Union must be supported to maintain the influence of the German Reich outside Europe. The people of the Reich are battle-hardened but wary, for fighting fellow Aryans is not good for the soul. It'll be good to give them a just war to reinvigorate them, to prove that Germany's not yet through. And just in case, we're going to go ahead, and do we actually have one, oh, we have people trying to deploy here. Yeah, get these guys going. Go, 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 go. I want planes, 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 please. And uh, Jutland. Good. Copenhagen. Northern tip of the Jutland. Oh, it's Wastika. Once a loyal protectorate of the Reich, Denmark has fallen into the grasp of fanatical nude Bogman Martinsen and his National Socialist Party of Denmark, who has seized the reins of power from Werner Biest, and now holds the nation in their iron grip. As leader of the Danish, Danish Waffen SS and self styled Führer of his party, Martinsen has served the Reich as a loyal collaborator for the past two decades. However, his infamous opposition to Danish integration has likely urged him towards his, his coup, and his desire to integrate Denmark as an independent but loyal member of the Einheits Pact set, looks to set to be implemented into reality. If Bormann were to generously accede to Martinson's wishes, it would be out of generosity to the loyal comrade and a desire for a swift diplomatic solution, nevertheless. This Dane is of no threat to us, and his pathetic little country would be crushed in an instant were the fear to command it. For now, Bormann is simply waiting for Martinson's inevitable demands. Let these Danes move the first chess piece. Seriously, I, I, I don't know when we can do this. The Great Hungarian Game, for years now, Hungary has been an unwilling participant in Germany's sphere of influence, both military and economically. Times are perhaps changing, however, although both countries share leadership that leans to the right of the political spectrum, that is where the similarities end. Hungarian sentiment towards the Germans is almost non existent at this point. Any goodwill Germany still had with a small country ended when it stood by as Hungary's neighbors tore her apart in the moment of weakness following the market crash of the 50s. It is hardly surprising that then Hungary is keeping its options open as the Reich recovers from its disastrous civil war. The Italians, perhaps seeing a prime opportunity to, to undermine the Germans, have begun to re reopen diplomatic channels, with there being also possible Italian investment into the economy and a mutual defensive pact. Not to be outdone, the Germans are likewise now taking special interest into their neighbor and historic ally. It seems the two are now in direct competition with each other once again, and the prize is and the prize is such a high stakes game for such a great game. Hungary, of course. I hunger for the Hungarians, which is terrible to say. I want to assess the situation. It's not for nothing that Africa is called the Dark Continent. Its vast lands have long remained undeveloped and little information escapes their colonies outside the official channels. The Burger Creeks serve several of these channels of communication with our agents in the continent, experiencing confusion at the simple task of whom to, to send the reports. Will the command structure effectively decapitated? Are Rex Commissariats banded together into Africa's shield? The shield's war against South Africa has further complicated issues, so it is vital we gain accurate reports of the situation on the ground and reestablish communications. Which should be good. 
All right, and can we do anything here yet? Nope, that's fine. Let's just close it up because it's causing a big old mess here. So, the takeover. Beautiful, isn't it? The Von Krasik dynasty has had in its possession since at least the Napoleonic Wars, Johann Ludwig Graf Schwerin von Krasik offhandedly gestured to the painting in his bureau as he led the Fuhrer into his office. I am not here to look at an oil painting's classic. Bauman's patience was already running thin, even though the talk hadn't even properly begun. They stayed silent for a moment, as the door behind them was closed by an aide. Von Krusik began to talk, but was quickly silenced. Bauman's tone and demeanor was more like an animal hunting his prey than human. Do you really expect a chance to keep your position, Krusik? There's none. I know you better than you think. I know your spare sympathies. I know the compromises you made. I know that you have been a spineless remnant of the Weimar system for far too long. That should have been out of power when you failed the Reich in the 50s. And yet, I am the reason you, are, you aren't you are fighting the SS in Prague. Krosik's defiance was measured but precise. And that is the only reason I am letting you leave this place standing on your feet. And you will leave, make no mistake, live the rest of your days with your family. Do not get in my way. Bowman casually placed his hand on the holster. The rest of the talk was much more smooth. In the end, Von Krasik handed over power quietly. The fear gave, the fear giveth, and the fear taketh away. A request from Martinson. M. Bowman, Führer and Reichskanzler des Großgermanisches Reiches. As a new foe of Denmark, I res am respectively writing to you on behalf of the Danish people. As you know, I have selflessly dedicated the last two decades of my life to the German Reich. My capable leadership of my party, as well as should Danish Asboff and SS, has inspired dutiful collaboration and support for the National Social Society of Denmark. It is my strong belief that the nation of Denmark deserves to exist as an independent state. While we are proud Aryan people, our culture differ differs from yours, and we must be sustained for the sake of European harmony. I have halted plans for Dutch or Danish integration into the Reich, and humbly request that you give me your political blessing. Denmark under my rule shall remain loyal to the German Reich and will stand proudly for 1,000 years as a member of the Unity Pact. Heil Bowman? Hmm. So be it. Denmark shall remain an independent member of the Pact. This is outrageous. Ooh. You know what? I don't know. You should let me know in the comments below. Should we do it? Denmark shall remain an independent member of the Pact. Or should we do this is an This is outrageous. Denmark needs a change of leadership. So let me know in the comments below. Who should we choose? The top one or the bottom one? But regardless, I think we'll end that episode here as we just got some helicopters. If you enjoyed today's episode and the German Civil War and my blunders, please consider leaving a like, you know, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will see what else Bowman Daddy has in store for us. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.